Today we're taking a look at a new entry in Gibson's Faded series of guitars. This is the Les Paul 60s Faded. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with the Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas, and you can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom swag, and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So this is a review, it's a demo, and it's also kind of like an online correction uh, because when we demoed the Faded SG, one of the things we talked about was that having open uh, coil pickups yeah. and that we were anticipating the Les Paul coming in with covered pickups. Um, yeah, and it didn't. And nope. you know, I, I swear that I think the initial photos from Gibson showed these yeah. with covered pickups. Nevertheless, it's, it's here, it's faded, it's satin, it's whatever. It's a cool 60s Les Paul for a few hundred dollars less. And uh, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. I dig it. Um, it's definitely different. And um, I like though, I actually, I'll say this. I like exposed humbuckers on a Les Paul more than I do on an SG. I agree. I don't know why. Maybe it's the top. The top, it just, it seems, one of my hairs fell out on the guitar, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you're married now. Yeah, so. it's happening. Yeah, it's what um, happened to me. So, yeah, I think the thing is, it gives it more of, it's such a solid, like, not seriously heavy, because it's not that heavy for Les Paul, but the Les Paul look feels like this chunky, heavy duty, and I feel like the uncovered humbuckers send a sort of vibe because I feel like more players like famous players in history have seen playing uncovered mm -hmm. on a Les Paul I think it looks nice on this guitar with the cream and then the black you know yeah. it's, it's cool the only thing that I'd like better is if it was zebra I love the look on like the classics yeah. with the zebra pups zebra's but, cool but very cool guitar so we've kind of gone through this with the other ones to explain what's effectively going on but let's do it one more time shall we so it is a US made Gibson 60s Les Paul with most of the specs that you would expect from a 60s Les Paul, <clears throat> like the J35 that we looked at, like the J45, like the SG, these were made effectively as a means of speeding up production to save them and you some time and money. And literally in both cases, because you know these guitars have been more difficult for us to get in. Um, you know, and in the process, whenever you are building a guitar, spraying on nitro, going through all the stages of mm -hmm. sanding and buffing and spraying and sanding and buffing, and all of that's going to make the guitar a little bit more expensive and also take longer to produce. So how do you shortcut that? Well, you don't go through all of the sanding and buffing, you know, and spraying stages. You spray on uh, a nitro that you finish with a sanded finish. It takes less manpower. It takes less time. Those two things mean that the guitar gets out sooner and that it costs less to manufacture, which Gibson passes on with a lower price point. The other benefit of it is the guitar's a little lighter typically because it's got less finish on it, even if the finish is pretty thin on nitro typically. Um, it's even thinner when yeah. it's a satin finish because you don't have all of those additional stages. And it has a good feel for it, you know, for some people like, like I prefer a satin finish. Even if it's nitro, I want an old patinaed kind of nitro yeah. feel to it rather than a brand new kind of candy coated glossy look on a nitro guitar yeah. um, or really any guitar for that point. I've, I've kind of over the years grown more and more yeah. like into, uh, the satin. into the satin finish or the kind of that knocked down look. So it has a great feel going for it. Some people are going to prefer the aesthetics of this. Um, I think a lot of people, I think more people will prefer the feel than people that prefer the aesthetics, but there it is. Yeah. And then of course, you're saving hundreds of dollars and they're more readily available. It's taking less time to get them out to us. Yeah, for reference, we ordered our Fadeds, acoustics and electrics, three or four months ago, yep. maybe. And we've gotten 35, 45, SG, and now the Les Paul. We just got a bunch of regular non-faded Les Pauls in when do we order those? March. March, I think. Yeah. Or February. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, we got them at the same time. If you've been waiting on a Les Paul that's gloss, we got them now. Same with SGs. Yeah. Bunch of finishes. Very, very beautiful tops. Oh really nice tops on this run. Yeah. It, I'll almost say it's been worth the wait. Almost. Yeah. But um, yeah, Fadeds have come in, in like half the time. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're nice guitars. I think that people have, after coming around to them, They've taken the acoustics. We've, you know, gotten rid of some of the SGs as well. 
So people are playing them in store and digging them. Yeah. Um, so I think that it's nice. I will say that, I think I said this in the last video, I wish Gibson had just called it the standard 60s Les Paul satin. Satin. It's definitely it, does, it doesn't need, need to be a whole other series. Well, the faded, thing I, you know, the other thing I don't <clears throat> like about the faded is that they had a series yeah. in the past called faded that was a much cheaper series that mm -hmm. was that was basically like even below a tribute, yeah. and these are not that. And so I find, hey, just Gibson, I, I'm in marketing. Okay, I find it that you don't want to confuse the consumer. Just that's that's free. So um, I've heard that one before. Yeah. <laughs> 101. So, so uh, but outside of that, it's a 60s, you know, so it's got the thinner neck, mm -hmm. right? You've got the, your rose, uh, rosewood bridge. You've got the Grover tuners. Mm -hmm. um, I, what's your opinion? I go back and forth on which tuners I prefer. I like the looks of, of the, the old 50s. style. Yeah. I like the feel. Of the yeah, 60s. so you like the look of the Clusons and the feel, the feel and the kind of the longevity yeah. of the Grovers. Yeah, I think so. Well, and that's why, you know, historically, a lot of people used to take those old Clusons off and put on Grovers. Yeah. And so you, you'd end up, you ever look at an old vintage Les Paul with different screw holes, that's why. Yeah, um, it's almost like the same between like a D28 and D35. Like, I like the look, I like the feel. Yeah. I don't know. Well, different. the biggest difference typically on those old tuners is that the, the buttons plastic so, yeah. buttons would break off. I don't know that that's as big of an issue nowadays. Yeah. Uh, one, I've, I've never had one of those really kind of seize up on me mm -hmm. where you're having to put a lot of tension, but the plastic's different too, so yeah. just FYI. So overall, you know, mahogany body, maple cap, it, let me take a look at the top, because... There's a little bit of flame yeah, in there. there's some nice flame. Especially, I mean, since it's it, satin, it's, I don't feel yeah, bad about get, catching the lights, but... It's not as deep because it doesn't have that gloss finish. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things, like, <clears> it's a nice top, but if it was glossed, you'd see a little bit more depth in there. But it is nice. Um, and then this color's cool. It's uh, faded, faded cherry, cherry sunburst. sunburst. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can really see the mahogany on the neck and the back and everything. It's a good looking guitar. We've talked a ton about tribute, studio, standard, all that stuff. This is almost to me like if you like the feel of the tribute, but you wanted it to be the quality a of the full standard. On. You know, you yeah. get the maple cap, all that. This is, um, you're not really going to get any flame in those other ones. You're not going to get the same pickups, that you know, all that stuff. It's just a nice feeling guitar that's got all the quality of the regular standard stuff, and I think it's cool. Cool, well let's listen to it. Cooper's gonna put it through its paces for you, so take it, take a listen, check it out. Mm. So there you have it. That is Cooper's demo of the Gibson Les Paul 60s faded model in faded cherry sunburst. Um, I think we one of the things that we need to discuss and deal with on these guitars is um, stuff I've been seeing online, particularly in response to some of Gibson's own videos and marketing on these models. And the biggest thing is uh, that they sound better because they're satin finished. And a lot of people saying, that's absolutely not the case. You know, yeah. it's not going to dramatically change the sound of the guitar because the finish is thinner. And I'm going to tell you, 
that that's true. It's not going to dramatically change the sound of the guitar because the finish is thinner on an electric guitar. Now on an acoustic guitar, it definitely will. When we looked at that J35, for instance, like yeah. that was, or the J45, it was definitely a little bit more resonant yeah. because the finish is thinner. And on an acoustic instrument, you know, the thicker the finish, the more it is like a blanket that is inhibiting the vibration and the resonance of the wood. On an electric guitar, there is an acoustic property to the guitar. And so the, you, you can have a thick enough finish, I suppose, you know, that could cause a problem with that, but not so much. Uh, with an electric guitar, particularly with a Les Paul, there's a lot of aspects. There's a whole lot of questions of like, do tone woods matter? I think they do. It's really to what extent. We did a whole video yeah. talking about there are different ways that you can think of how a tone wood matters from weight to feel to um, aesthetic choice, you know, all of those things. And then at the very end of it, it, there might be some difference that it makes to the resonance of the strings that the pickups, which act like microphones, effectively pick up. Um, but in this particular case, so much of everything else is the same, and the finish is just a little thinner. The bigger difference would be having the pickup covers off yeah, rather than the finish changing the sound of the guitar. That's going to be your biggest change away. You know, if you're not familiar, a lot of guys back in the day started pulling off pickup covers. Pickup covers were initially put on humbuckers to prevent uh, feedback and prevent um, interference, 60 cycle hum, that kind of thing, you know, to shield them. Now, some non potted pickups would have their own feedback, microphonic mm -hmm. feedback. Have you ever yeah. dealt with that? Um, I've played some guitars that like it just, you can tell immediately, like, but not on stage or anything. I haven't had to mess around with that. I've had to deal with that. I, now, I have a, a custom shop, Les Paul, that's not potted. Yeah. No microphonic pickup or feedback on that guitar, but I used to have an Epiphone yeah. that was terrible with it, and it was the feedback you didn't want. It was like, on the radio. It was the honk, oh, it was the <clears throat> really bad, yeah, yeah. not a con totally uncontrollable, you never knew where it was coming. So, both with unpotted and potted pickups way back when, guys started pulling it off and they found, oh, I got more high end yeah. because we, we pulled off those covers. So that's gonna change this tone. Really what's going on here is they're available, they're cheaper, and they have a different feel and look to them. Mm -hmm. And you, you like it or you don't like it. And if you don't like it, that's cool. There are other guitars like this that are available now. Yeah, So it's, it's tough because sometimes we talk about you have your really nice high-end custom shop, something that's amazing to play at home. You don't want to take it on the road. This is not priced as a road guitar by any stretch sure. of the means, but it would be a fantastic road Les Paul. Mm -hmm. If you play a Les Paul in your rig and you're going on tour or something, this I feel like is something, well, it if it's worth spending the money. Could be a road guitar depending upon what your other guitar is. Yeah. Like if your other Les Paul is a custom shop, exactly. this is like a third of the price potentially. Yeah, and this is something that, you know, it's. It feels like it's just ready to go. It's got all of the frills stripped away, mm -hmm. the gloss, the covers, the pick guard, and it's just kind of ready to rock and roll. I think it sounds really nice too, and I don't think it sounds really much different. It comes with a hard shell case, right? It comes with a hard shell case. Got it somewhere on here. But yeah. it's the same case that normal standard comes in. Um, yeah, it feels great, I think it sounds really nice. I would probably take a faded electric before I took a faded acoustic. That's just me. I did really like the J45. I thought, I mean, I don't play a ton of J35s, but the Faded that we played sold immediately. Yeah. I thought it was nice. But the SG and the Les Paul, I think they're a little more what I would look for in like a satin finished Gibson, probably gonna be the electrics. It's cool. just me. Well, if you are interested in this guitar, you can check it out on our website and Cooper's gonna tell you all about that. Alamomusic.com. I'm sure you've been there. And uh, I'm sure you've seen on the Gibsons, it looks like we just got pictures of Gibsons because you can't buy them. But as we always say with the PSA, just give us a call. Chat with us, email us. If they're on the website, they're here. Yeah, I made sure of it. And the phone yeah. number's there. So you can just call or you can chat. We'll make it easy. And yeah. we'll, we'll get it to you. You know, the benefit of that is we can go like, hey, look, here's photos and, and here, here's a demo of what it sounds like. Or like we kind of take the extra mile. We want to make sure you get the right guitar. Because yeah. I always say at the end of the day, the best guitar in the world is the one you're playing. That's so true. We want to make, it is true. I always That's say that. That's true. And I will say. We're going to get an animatronic in the store. We came up with that while you were on your honeymoon. How's it going? We're guys? just going to put an <laughs> animatronic, you and me, and your, your animatronic's going to say, how's it going, guys? And I'm, guys. I'm going to be like, you know, the robotic Chuck E. Cheese of, the best guitar in the world is the one you're playing. <laughs> oh, my God. <goodness. laughs> 
Um, I will say, as a last thing, you're seeing this one right now. We got a few more coming in. This is the first one that we've yes. gotten. Like we mentioned earlier, we got our first Les Pauls in almost a year. Mm -hmm. um, some of the nicest tops that I've seen in a really long For time. For sure. If you're interested in a Les Paul, you see that we got them on the website. That's a photo of one that we have, but we have several more. Yep. If you want to see some tops, if you really want to pick something that's going to be uh, the exact one that you want, we got a bunch of finishes, a bunch of tops. Ask us. We'll send you the pictures. They're really nice. There you have it. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, keep coming back for more. We'll see you next time. Thank you.